what is the electric flux through a sphere of radius r that has a point charge q at its center? Let's look at this by starting off with a sketch of our point charge. We'll just use a positive point charge for this problem. And let's illustrate the electric field lines that are radiating spherically or radially away from this positive point charge. The electric field line is radi lines are radiating in all directions, not just in the plane of the screen while you're looking at this video. So it's radiating in three-dimensional space. Our goal is to find the electric flux of a sphere of a certain radius. Now they didn't tell us a specific radius, just a radius r. So I'm assuming this radius can vary. All we know is that we have a charge q at the center of our sphere. Let's go ahead and sketch this sphere. I'm going to call this sphere a Gaussian sphere. Now you'll understand why I'm calling it a Gaussian sphere in another lecture. But for now, I'll just say that a Gaussian surface is an imaginary surface in space. It doesn't have to be a real surface representing a real physical object. It is just a mathematical surface in space that has an area. So here is our Gaussian sphere. This Gaussian sphere has a certain radius, r. Now this radius can vary. The sphere can be bigger, the sphere can be smaller. Our goal is to find the electric flux passing through this Gaussian sphere. Now, the electric, the electric field has spherical symmetry. What that means is any point on this sphere, the electric field is going to look identical to any other point. It's going to have the same magnitude relative to that point, and it's going to be pointing in the same direction relative to that point as you compare that point with other points. So we can look at any point on this sphere. So let's just pick a point that maybe is right up here. We'll take a representative surface on our Gaussian sphere. So this is going to be a representative spherical rectangle. That representative spherical rectangle is going to have a tiny bit of area given by this area differential. And that tiny bit of area is, remember, going to be perpendicular to the sphere at that point. Notice also how the electric field is perpendicular to the sphere at any point on the sphere. This is because electric fields have spherical symmetry due when they are the electric fields caused by point charges. So the sphere obviously has spherical symmetry, and the electric field has spherical symmetry. That's going to help us evaluate this problem. Let's go ahead and find the electric flux now. The electric flux passing through this sphere of charge is given as the surface integral of the electric field at the surface of the sphere and the area vector of the sphere. Well, let's look at the electric field at the surface of the sphere. This is the electric field of a point charge. And previously, we know that the magnitude of the electric field due to a point charge is equal to kq over r squared where r is the distance away from the point charge.
Now, since this sphere has a specific radius, the electric field is constant in magnitude everywhere on our sphere. Let's continue evaluating the electric flux through the surface. The electric flux through the surface will be given by the surface integral of the electric field dotted with the area vector. Well, this means we could take the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of the area vector times the cosine of the angle between the electric field and the area vector. Because the area, because the electric field has a constant magnitude on the surface of the sphere, I am going to pull that outside of the integral. Also, the orientation of the electric field and the area vector is a constant. So I'm going to pull that outside of the integral. We are left with the surface integral of the area differential. This then is the magnitude of the electric field times the cosine of the angle between the electric field and the area times the area of the sphere. If you look at our sketch, the angle between the electric field and the area vector is zero degrees. That means this angle here is zero degrees and the cosine of zero degrees is equal to one. This means that the electric flux is equal to the magnitude of the electric field times the area of the sphere. This is, well, the magnitude of the electric field we know is k q over r squared. The area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Notice that we have the radius of a sphere in the numerator, radius of the sphere in the denominator. They cancel out. And I see I have a 4 pi there. I happen to remember that the Coulomb constant k also has a 4 pi in it. So I'm going to rewrite the Coulomb constant as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And this is q times 4 pi. Notice the 4 pi in the numerator cancels with the 4 pi in the denominator. And we get that the electric flux due to a sphere of charge is equal to k is equal to the amount of charge that's inside that sphere divided by epsilon naught. This is a huge result. Look at this. This electric flux says it depends only on the amount of charge inside that sphere. This relationship for electric flux says the flux does not depend on the size of that sphere. Wow. This leads us to Gauss's law. We're going to learn about Gauss's law in the next set of videos. For now, just know that the electric flux through a closed surface is independent of the size 
or shape of the surface and depends only on the amount of charge inside that surface.